Welcome back, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle. This is It's Your Call, and our topic this hour is the death penalty for cop killers. That's a question that we have asked our guests. We're asking you. We encourage you to go ahead and get involved. Here's what we're asking. Should cop killers always face the death penalty, or do you disagree with it no matter who the victim is? And does executing criminals actually send any kind of message, and can it serve as a deterrent? Or in your opinion, do you think it should just be abolished altogether in favor of automatic life sentences. If you want to tell us what you think, you can email me directly at lynn at lynndoyle.net. You can also find us on Facebook, MySpace, or YouTube. You know what? We're going to um, share some of those comments with you in just a moment. But first, I want to go back to our original question, because Jim was just about to answer as we went to break, whether the government belongs in the business of what Mike Vandeveen calls revenge, or in your mind, you see it as executing justice. Well, just before I get into that, I always like it when attorneys say, since you brought it up, counsel has indicated that there is a financial look here. And I don't personally, in answer to your question initially, I don't believe the government should be involved. However, when we look at the killing of a police officer, we're looking at how it was done. If this was uh, malice of forethought, which they usually are, if this was uh, where you're taking someone's life without even thinking about it, then we clearly must have a law similar or exactly like that which they have in uh, New Hampshire, where it is against the law to kill a police officer. But it's where a specific law that says you cannot kill a police officer? It says that the death penalty is on the table right from the very beginning if you kill a police well, officer. That's New Hampshire. Well, that's, in, that's in Pennsylvania as well, and, and uh, when we were talking before the show, it, it's not, it wouldn't be constitutional, it would be against the United States Constitution if you were to write a law that said you automatically get the death penalty if you kill a police officer because it's required, it's mandated that in order for a jury to uh, hand down a sentence of the death penalty, they must weigh mitigating and aggravating factors. They, and those mitigating and ag aggravating factors, counselor, are the reason that it's absolutely necessary uh, and to have a clear law that indicates where there is an intentional killing of a police officer uh, that the death penalty is on the table. If it's intentional and he goes out with malice of forethought to kill this police officer, the death penalty is not unreasonable. And going back to what Counselor was talking about, which is the financial end of, I like to do that. I'm not an attorney. I sit on the, the criminal justice board of the American Bar Association, though, although I'm not an attorney. But you brought in the finances. I would love to be able to have the money that we spend on cop killers that are in jail to put my granddaughter and daughter, everybody to college. You're not kidding. These well, people in, we, we pay for college educations yes, for criminals do. in jail. Yes, well, we do. We well, pay we, up to $35,000 a year per person, the, per, per criminal, just for him to sit in jail. The finances involved, Who though, wouldn't like here to have with that? the death penalty. The finances with the death penalty. If, if you, he's dead, there if is you no are finance. A proponent, That's right. If, if you are a proponent of the death penalty, then what you're saying is, we are willing to spend three to five million dollars per defendant to have our right to execute. If you were to say there is no death penalty, you would save for each death penalty case three to five million dollars because a life sentence does not have the same appellate rights and on the other or hand, appellate if, procedure. If you were to do this, counselor, you would also allow that person to come back to the streets to commit the same crimes over. We're looking at... That's uh, not going to happen. <laughs> but uh, but you, life know what, you don't know that it's not going to happen because it, in my brother's case, they said the same thing. And he's out. He's doing art shows. He writes books. I mean, he speaks at universities. Are you kidding me? If we had killed him the way he was supposed to be killed... The, 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 your brother's murderer was prosecuted under a law that no longer exists, was sentenced under a law that, yeah, no, under law that no longer I don't exists, care because and isn't in the reality of today. Today, a life sentence without the possibility of parole means just that, and you cannot point to any one example under today's law of somebody who is sentenced to a life sentence without the possibility of parole who actually got parole. Okay. It doesn't happen. 
On that note, I'm going to go to the telephone lines because we've gotten some interest here from our Facebook friends in this topic, including from Tony, who joins us on the line now. Hi, Tony. How are you? Good, Lynn. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Where do you stand on this issue? First and foremost, are you in favor of the death penalty? I mean, I am in favor of the death penalty. Okay, so when it comes to a police officer who's been killed in the line of duty, what do you think should happen? Is it, should it be automatic, like they're saying in uh, New Hampshire it is? Well, I, I think that if you are um, found guilty by your jury of your peers, you should, you should get the death penalty. And I also think this, I was listening to the argument back and forth about, uh, about with the council talking about the money. You should get only one appeal, and that's it. Yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> well, the problem, the problem with that is our judicial no system, our they, criminal they justice give them one system. Appeal and done. Well, the problem with that is our criminal justice system is terribly flawed, and well, innocent people are convicted of, of crimes, including homicide, every day in this country. So what you're doing is allowing for the possibility of an innocent man being convicted and then only giving him one appeal. Our appellate courts also aren't perfect. And there are dozens of cases of people. Uh, how many people have been, and, and you should know the statistic, something like 84 people in the last right. 10 years have been exonerated from homicide cases that they didn't commit. Not, not, that, I, they, I know not that they're not guilty. They're innocent, innocent people convicted of crimes that they didn't do. And let me and ask then you're going to go that. allow the government I, to I, kill them? In all, in all due respect, uh, to, the, to I guess he's an attorney there, to all mm -hmm. due respect, I bet you if you go to any jail or prison in the U.S. right now and ask the person there if they are guilty, they will say no. Right? Yeah, but Tony, I, I do have to say that just in Pennsylvania, for example, there have been six people who have been exonerated and released from death row, not, as Mike said, not, not guilty, but absolutely innocent. What if they had been put to death? You, you can't really go back and say, oops, we made a mistake. That's why I wanted to give them one appeal. <laughs> one appeal and done. Well, and you think you can get it done enough and with one appeal? Well, we have a, well first of all, we do have a jo uh, flawed jury uh, system, and, and it includes the trial lawyers on both sides, both the defense um, and the prosecutors. And I think a lot of times is that it's going back and forth, back and forth, and that's what costs the taxpayers so, much, so many dollars. Okay. So cut all that out. All right, let's get some more reaction. Thanks so much for your Thank call. Thank you. One of those cases you uh, mentioned, Lynn, among those six was the case of Nicholas Yaris. He was from mm -hmm. Philadelphia, but the case happened in Delaware he appeared County. On this show. Uh, Mr. Yaris okay. lost every appeal that he had. He had been on death row for 21 years, and in fact, they discovered DNA evidence that showed he was not, in fact, the killer. He spent half his life uh, on death row in Pennsylvania for something he didn't do, and the appeals process did not save him. Um, the government has changed the appeals process, so that's very difficult. Um, even though the appeals process can go on with good lawyers, um, it's difficult with uh, timelines and other deadlines that uh, defendants have to meet. So All suppose right. we look at the entire judicial system and we change it for people that we have no doubt committed these murders because, like in this case and my brother's case, there was no doubt there was a whole bar full of people that had killed two detectives. We're not talking about the people who are possibly innocent. I think we're off track. We're, we're talking about we're talking about cop killers. We are, we're on track no because every one of those people who were convicted were convicted under a standard beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt, they were found guilty. And there was somebody sitting there at that time saying, there's no doubt. They're guilty. It couldn't be anybody else. We aren't talking about somebody potentially innocent. But we were, and it's okay. taking evidence such as DNA uh, type scientific evidence to set these people well, free. All right, I have to take a quick break. We're going to come back and have more of our debate here. The question that we're asking you, and we'd like to know your opinion on, is do you believe in the death penalty, and do you think that it should be mandatory for anyone who kills a police officer? We'll be right back.